You already know that I was going to dinner in a restaurant opposite the house where Puccini lived in Milan for over 10 years, but I didn't tell you the name of the restaurant. Just past the famed Enote Cacotti at the corner of Via Solferino and Via Castelvidardo, it's up ahead on the right. Pisacco. Opened recently, the decor is decidedly contemporary, with naked light bulbs hanging from the ceiling in a mass of exposed cables, and a red bicycle frame padlocked to one of the walls. While it's not necessarily what you'd call cozy, I found it decidedly agreeable. The menu is very small, so I didn't take long to make my selections. The Prosecco, from the Tenuta Grimani halfway between Vicenza and Verona, along with good bread, rice crackers and olives, took the edge off my hunger until my antipasto arrived. That was a salad of hearts of lettuce, radish rounds and yellow peach slices with a yogurt dressing. Light and refreshing, it was quickly trumped by a sensational primo, spaghetti alla chitarra with botarga, on squid ink and a parsley puree. It was the kind of pasta I could eat a vast amount of if there were second helpings to be had. For my wine to go with it, I selected a Rosato Contessa Staffa from the Antica Inotria in Northern Apulia, made from Montepulciano and Nero di Troia grapes. I made sure I got a second glass of it before my secondo arrived. There was a rather obnoxious trio of business school students at the neighboring table who spent their entire dinner bragging to each other about what companies the friends of their fathers owned, and never once mentioned the food or had a single compliment about it when the waitress took their plates away. Never mind. They were annoying, but not annoying enough to detract from my enjoyment of my meal. In due time, my secondo arrived, and what a secondo it was! A very generous serving of sea bream fillet, with julienne snow peas on a sauce containing tahini and candied lemon peel. Of the many good fish secondi I had this year in Milan, this one was a memorable standout. Thankfully, the obnoxious threesome had left before my dessert. And when I couldn't make up my mind as to my choice of dolce, the waitress helped me out by bringing me an additional taste of my second choice. That arrived first. Beer and hazelnut flavored ice cream. A total winner, which I'd love to try again as a full portion. My first dessert choice, which followed, was equally stunning. A cherry and ricotta tart with a soft cocoa crust along with a scoop of another unusual ice cream flavor, licorice. Resting on a bed of sweet crumbs, it too was delicious. The waitress explained that one of the staff had a relative in the Veneto with a couple of cherry trees, and the colleague had received a huge consignment of cherries a week or so earlier. Thinking about how they could be imaginatively used, aside from just being eaten or made into jam, they decided to incorporate some into this tart, which I think was a great solution. Rather than pairing the dessert with a pasito, the drinks waiter made an unexpected recommendation. A glass of 16% Storico Vermouth from Cocchi in Torino. While that sounded odd, I had to admit that the sweet, bitter herbal red vermouth worked very well, even though I think it was the first time I was drinking vermouth not before, but at the end of a meal. In a very good mood after such excellent food and wine, I looked forward to the rest of a balmy late summer evening. <laughs>